What if I told you that the widely accepted notion that DNA contains a blueprint for building human beings was in fact nothing more than a fanciful lie that was spun by scientists with atheistic motivations over the years? It's a provocative idea, isn't it? To think that we may have been misled about the very foundations of life itself. This tale begins with the pioneering molecular biologist Francois Jacob. On page 313 of his 1970 book, The Logic of Life, A History of Heredity, he claimed, During embryonic development, the instructions contained in the chromosomes of the egg are gradually translated and executed, determining when and where the thousands of molecular species that constitute the body of an adult are to be formed. The whole plan of growth, the whole series of operations to be carried out, the order and the site of syntheses and their coordination are all written down in the nucleic acid message. Those two sentences are now known to be a huge fiction. Jacob's ideological motivation in telling this huge lie is made rather clear by the quotation he gives at the very beginning of this book, where he quotes Diderot as saying this, Do you see this egg? With it you can overthrow all the schools of theology, all the churches of the earth. Jacob got the idea that if a blueprint for making humans was to be found in a human egg, that this might be a devastating blow against religion, one that might help to overthrow all the schools of theology, all the churches of the earth, by somehow showing that the physical origin of each human was a purely mechanistic affair that required no special assistance, directly or indirectly, from some divine power. Another French biologist who told us this gigantic lie about DNA containing a blueprint was Jacques Monod. On page 104 of his 1971 book, Chance and Necessity, an essay on the natural philosophy of modern biology, Monod told us the following lie about DNA. The DNA alphabet can therefore be written all the diversity of structures and performances the biosphere contains. Like Francois Jacob, Monod gives away his ideological motivations. On page 171 of his book, Monod gives away his atheistic motivations by referring to the disgusting farrago of Judeo-Christian religiosity, scientific progressism, belief in the natural rights of man, and utilitarian pragmatism. Monod's book is largely devoted to trying to combat what he calls animist thinking, by which he means any kind of spirituality or theism or belief in souls or spirits or human destiny. Then came Francis Crick the co-discoverer of the structure of DNA. In his 1988 book, What Mad Pursuit, Crick further propagated this notion of DNA as a blueprint, despite the fact that DNA does not contain the control structures or the specificity to dictate the intricacies of cellular function, let alone the growth and development of an entire organism. Likewise, in 1991, in his book One Long Argument, Ernst Mayer also falsely claimed that DNA contains the blueprint for making the phenotype. In his book, he also revealed his atheistic motivations for telling this lie, when he stated, The conviction that the diversity of the natural world was the result of natural processes, and not the work of God, was the idea that brought all the so-called Darwinians together. Several other examples can be cited of prominent atheists telling this huge lie about DNA being a blueprint. But the main point is that this lie, which was often openly admitted to be motivated by atheism, grew through the years, spreading through textbooks, scientific literature, and popular culture. It was an idea that was simple, elegant, and utterly misleading. The truth of the matter is that it is now known that DNA is not a blueprint. It does not contain a specification for building humans. Recently, Professor David S. Moore stated, The common belief that there are things inside of us that constitute a set of instructions for building bodies and minds, things that are analogous to blueprints or recipes, is undoubtedly false. Likewise, Professor Massimo Pigliucci has stated that old-fashioned metaphors like genetic blueprint and genetic program are not only woefully inadequate but positively misleading. In a 2016 scientific paper, three scientists stated the following. It is now clear that the genome does not directly program the organism. The computer program metaphor has misled us. The genome does not function as a master plan or computer program for controlling the organism. The genome is the organism's servant, not its master. Sarah Walker and Paul Davies stated, DNA is not a blueprint for an organism. 
No information is actively processed by DNA alone. DNA is a passive repository for transcription of stored data into RNA, some, but by no means all, of which goes on to be translated into proteins. Geneticist Adam Rutherford stated that DNA is not a blueprint, a statement also made by biochemistry professor Keith Fox. Likewise, geneticist Kevin Mitchell, a geneticist, stated, the genome is not a blueprint. As well, Anthony Jose, associate professor of cell biology and molecular genetics, stated DNA cannot be seen as the blueprint for life, adding that it is at best an overlapping and potentially scrambled list of ingredients that is used differently by different cells at different times. That's the truth about DNA. It is not a blueprint and no one has a realistic clue as to how human beings are actually formed during embryonic development. As Linda Medina stated in 2020, at present, the problem of biological form remains unsolved. And as Alexander Ciara stated in 2012, the magic of the mechanisms inside each genetic structure saying exactly where that nerve cell should go, the complexity of these, the mathematical models on how these things are indeed done, are beyond human comprehension. Even though I am a mathematician, I look at this with the marvel of how do these instruction sets not make these mistakes as they build what is us. It's a mystery, it's magic, it's divinity. In closing, far from what prominent atheistic scientists falsely promulgated for years, DNA is not a blueprint nor a recipe for making humans. It is at best an overlapping and potentially scrambled list of ingredients that is used differently by different cells at different times. The truth about how a human being is actually formed is far different and far more intesting than what these atheistic scientists have falsely led many people into believing. If there is a moral to be had from this story, it may very well be to question everything, even if it comes from supposed scientific experts. Because, as we have now seen, even scientific experts are all too human and are very much prone to letting their own personal biases, not scientific evidence, dictate their beliefs.